Hi class, happy snow day. Since class is canceled, I'm putting together this video with some additional examples on simplifying radicals that I would have done in class. I hope this will help you complete your assignment that's due tonight. Let's start with this example asking us to simplify the product of two radicals. I could simplify each radical separately and then multiply things together, but I think it'll save me trouble if I multiply first and then simplify. So, I'm going to multiply these together since the product of two radicals is the radical of the product, assuming everything's positive. I can rewrite my expression as the square root of, let's see, 5 times 15, that's going to be 75, x times x cubed, that's x to the fourth, because when I multiply two expressions, I add the exponents, and y to the seventh times y cubed, that's going to be y to the tenth, since 7 plus 3 is 10. Now I want to simplify by pulling as much out of the square root sign as I can. If 75 were a perfect square, I could just take the square root of it, but since it's not, I'm going to factor it. So 75, let's see, that's 25 times 3, and 25 is 5 times 5, so I can write that as 5 squared times 3. Now I can write my square root, let's see, so that's 5 squared times 3 times x to the 4th times y to the 10th. Now, since I know that the square root of anything squared is just that original thing, assuming the variables are positive, uh, I can maybe rewrite this as by breaking everything up into a bunch of squares. So let's see, I already have a square here. There's no hope for the 3. The x to the 4th, I can write that as x squared times x squared, right? That makes 4x's. And y to the 10th, I'm going to need 5y squareds to get 10y's out of that. 1, 2, 3, y squared, y squared. Now splitting up the square root back into a product of a bunch of square roots, every time I see the square root of something squared, I just replace it with a thing. So that's 5. I still have the square root of 3. That gives me x, x, y, 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 y. And I can rewrite that as 5 squared of 3 times x squared y to the fifth. So that's one way to simplify this expression. Alternatively, I could complete this problem a little bit faster the following way. I could go ahead and break up my 5 squared times 3 times x to the 4th times y to the 10th. I'm going to break that up, go ahead and break that up as a product of square roots. Now, the square root of 5 squared is certainly 5. Square root of 3 stays the same. Square root of x to the 4th is going to be x squared. But there are a couple ways to see that. One way is the square root of x fourth, that's x to the fourth to the one-half power, since square roots are the same as half powers, and now I can multiply my exponents to get my x squared. Or alternatively, I can think of that because the square root of x to the fourth, that's the square root of x squared squared, since I take a power to a power and multiply my exponents. Square root of something squared is just a thing, so that's x squared. Similarly, the square root of y to the tenth that's going to be y to the fifth. Notice that I'm just taking half of the exponent, and you can see that the same way. That's because if I do the square root of y to the tenth, that's the same thing as y to the tenth to the one-half, which is y to the ten times one-half, or y to the fifth. Or alternatively, you can think of this as the square root of y to the tenth is the square root of y to the fifth squared which is y to the fifth. So if it weren't for all that little side work I did, that would have, this would have been a faster way to get to the same answer as before. The next few examples have to do with rewriting expressions by rationalizing denominators. Please pause the video for a moment and see if you can decide if these two expressions represent the same thing or different things. In fact, they represent the same thing. And we can see that that we can transform A to look like B by doing something called rationalizing the denominator, trying to get all the square roots out of the denominator at the expense of maybe putting some more square roots in the numerator. So to rationalize the denominator in this case, since there's just that one, that one piece with square roots in it, I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of y, the, the thing that has the square root around it. If I multiply the bottom by the square root of y, 
I have to multiply the top also, so I won't change the value of my expression. This way I'm just multiplying by 1 in a fancy form. Now when I multiply fractions, I multiply the numerator, and I multiply the denominator. Well, let's see, the square root of y times the square root of y, that's the square root of y squared, which is the same thing as just y. So I can bring my square roots together and get 3 square root of xy over 5y, which is exactly the second expression. Here are two even crazier expressions. The last one's especially crazy. Again, try to decide if these two represent the same thing or represent a different thing. Kind of surprisingly, they actually represent the same thing still. And we can transform 1 to 2 by, again, rationalizing the denominator. This time we're going to use something called the conjugate. And that's because we have a difference, in this case, of, of two expressions, one of which has a square root in it. So when I have the difference of two expressions, one of which with a square root in it, um, I find the conjugate by taking the sum of those two expressions. If instead I had had the sum of two expressions, then the conjugate would be the difference. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by this conjugate of, of the denominator. So let me move down here and rewrite with more space. Once again, I have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing so that I'm not changing the value of my expression. I'm just multiplying by 1 in a fancy form. Now let's look at what happens in the denominator first. I have to multiply 3 by 3, 3 by the square root of a, negative square root of a by 3, and negative square root of a by square root of a. So that's going to give me 3 times 3 is 9, plus 3 square root of a, minus 3 square root of a, minus square root of a squared. So in a moment, that I'll simplify to these things cancel. So that'll be 9 minus square root of a squared is a. Notice how I've gotten rid of the square roots of the denominator, which is why it's called rationalizing the denominator. We, we get rid of the, the I don't know, <laughs> irrational numbers. Um, the radical signs. Okay, let's look at the numerator. So again, we have to, we're going to have four terms. This times this, this times that, b times 3, b times square root of a. That gives us 15a plus 5a square root of a plus 3b plus b square root of a. Now that's starting to look similar to this expression here. And in fact, it, we can see that it's exactly the same thing by turning our radicals into exponents. So let's see, we still have the 15a. Uh, this is the same thing as 5a times a to the 1 half. We've still got the 3b, and we've got b times a to the 1 half. And now, let's see, a times a to the 1 half here, that's really, I can add my exponents. So that's going to be 5a to the 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. 3b, b a to the 1 half. And that's exactly what I have in this expression, just in a slightly different order. So these really are the same. Kind of weird. Please pause the video and try your hand at rationalizing the denominator of this expression. Since we have a sum of two expressions in the denominator, we want to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So that's square root of a minus 1. Now, when we multiply out the numerator, we'll get four terms. Square root of a squared, uh, let's see, minus the square root of a. And now we have 7 times the square root of a. And finally, 7 times minus 1, that's minus 7. On the denominator, we get the square root of a squared minus the square root of a plus the square root of a minus 1. Notice how the square root things cancel, just like before, that's the whole magic of using the conjugate. It makes those square roots cancel out. So now on the numerator, square root of a squared is a, minus the square root of a plus 7 square root of a, that's a net of 6 square root of a's, minus 7. And then on the denominator, we have a minus 1. We've gotten rid of the square roots on the denominator, rationalize the denominator. I'm happy leaving the square root in the numerator, but if you want to, you can change it to an exponent instead. It's really up to you. That's all the examples I have today. I hope you enjoy the snow, which hasn't started yet for me. 
And um, please do spend some time to finish your Alex objective if you haven't done it already. Goodbye.